Welcome to My Healthy Mind. I'm Michael Hunter. For many young people, going off to college is the first time they've been away from home and the support structure of their family and established friends. Everything is new. All the decisions and the mistakes are theirs to make. It can be really overwhelming. This exciting, bewildering, and vulnerable time is when young people may experiment with alcohol or drugs to cope, to fit in just for the fun of it. But though drugs have been an undeniable part of college life since the 60s, these are more pervasive, addictive, and dangerous than anything available on college campuses in previous generations. To combat collegiate drug and alcohol use, to actually facilitate recovery, a number of initiatives have been undertaken in universities across the country. Today, we'll be talking with a young woman in the collegiate recovery community at Michigan State University. One of the many young people who, with the help of both professional and peer support, are learning to stay in college and in recovery. Kira Benkowski, welcome to My Healthy Mind. Thank you. Kira, you're a second semester junior at Michigan State University and part of the collegiate recovery community and three and a half years sober. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. For us to begin, can you start with a little bit about your background with your family and in particular how you got into substance use? Yeah, so early on I had a very um, normal childhood, as some would say. Um, I was raised by my mom and dad and I have a sister named Maggie. And I didn't really have any issues until about middle school. And um, I saw all my parents drinking, all their friends were drinking, my relatives, and they always seemed to have a good time and relax. They would come home from work, feel relaxed. And I started getting heightened emotions in middle school, as one does, and I wanted to feel relaxed. So early on, I um, started to indulge in drinking. I would steal alcohol out of my parents' liquor cabinets. And the first time I had ever drank, I had gotten drunk and completely blacked out. So that started really early on. It wasn't a frequent thing that I did, but maybe on the weekends when I was with some friends who also wanted to try, um, got more involved in that. How old were you when you first started drinking? About 12 or 13 years old. And did your parents find that out? No, they didn't. I usually would do it really late at night and they would be asleep. I kept it to myself, didn't tell them about anything. How did it spiral into a, an addiction and out of control? In about high school, when I met some friends at the time um, and they were willing to do it is when I started to drink, use pot, and try other substances. Um, and it became easier to start doing it frequently because I was building a tolerance. And because my other friends were doing it, I felt like it was okay with how much I was doing it, even though I was probably doing it more than them. We'd hang out, we would smoke or drink, and they'd probably stop after that, but I'd get home and keep smoking or drinking. Um, I would go to school drunk. I would go to school high, try different substances. Um, so about beginning of high school, 
my freshman year leading into my sophomore is when it was pretty much spiraling and my mental health was getting a lot worse because of it. Do you think you were drinking to medicate your mental health? Absolutely. It was, I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety at the end of middle school and I wasn't getting a lot of treatment for it. Um, any that I found helpful anyway, going to therapy, only did so much. I wanted something right now that would make me feel better, not something down the line. So I definitely was using and drinking to calm myself down or make myself happy, however I wanted to feel. And no one adult-wise was the wiser when this was happening? No, I was pretty secretive. Um, and I also was getting really good grades despite using uh, and drinking very frequently. So it's, I don't blame them. Um, it's very difficult. I was very involved in extracurriculars. I had a job and I feel like I was kind of right under their nose. That makes sense. So your parents trusted you obviously mm -hmm. and you appear responsible. What about your sibling? My sister, uh, she's four years younger than me. So at that point, she has told me recently that she would see behaviors that I was doing. She saw me sneaking out at night. She saw me, you know, drinking or using, and she didn't really do anything about it. I think at one point she told my mom that she saw me sneak out and um, my mom didn't believe her. She thought that she had a bad dream and told her to go back to sleep but she, she knows what she saw and recently she told me about how she used to see me do it, but she just didn't do anything about it because nothing happened when she first went and told my mom. So you weren't getting into trouble or anything, so how did you come to the realization that this is a problem? Um, I didn't really come to a realization that I had a problem until very much later on. My parents started figuring things out when I started quitting certain extracurricular activities. My mom caught me smoking um, and my mental health was getting worse. I was having suicide attempts. I was, was self-harming um, and was doing a lot of things that she started noticing um, eventually. And she realized I had a problem and she told me I had a problem, <laughs> but I didn't believe her. I thought I was just a high schooler and this is what high schoolers do and I'm getting good grades, so why does it matter? I really didn't notice it to be a problem until um, my parents ended up kicking me out of the house once I graduated high school. As you were living the parallel life, mm -hmm. doing the therapy and getting kicked out, were your friends concerned for you because you were, you know, busier than they were? I didn't have a lot of friends. Um, I did lose a lot of my friends when I started using more frequently. They didn't want to be involved in it, a lot of my friends growing up. But um, I had one friend specifically who engaged in a lot of the same behaviors I did, and I do you think she probably had some similar addictive tendencies as me, so we didn't really question each other about things. We both thought it was normal. Um, when I ended up moving schools, I didn't really make any new friends over there because I kept to myself. Um, so I didn't really have any accountability on that front. If you're having any kind of mental health crisis, we can help. At Team Wellness Crisis Centers, you'll be seen immediately, stabilized in our own private facility, and given all the care you need to get better. Don't wait. Call the Team Wellness Helpline at 1-888-813-TEAM. It could be your lifeline. Here, then something happened during your summer. What about that? So after I graduated high school, um, my parents had 
kind of had enough. They had sent me to a couple of rehabs during high school. They had tried their best. They kept trying to support me in any way they could and eventually their steam kind of ran, ran out. So once I graduated high school, turned 18, which was at the beginning of the summer in mid-June, uh, they said, you can either go to rehab or you can move out. And I chose to move out um, because I didn't want to go to rehab. I wasn't ready to get clean. I didn't completely think I had a problem. I knew there'd probably be something there, but I was going to grow out of it. And I moved out, um, moved in with a woman in Warren, Michigan, and didn't know her, just found her online. And my using escalated a lot because I was living on my own, didn't have a job, wasn't looking for a job, really had no responsibilities. Um, so that summer was really difficult and I basically spent every minute uh, using substances. So the end of that summer is I was supposed to go to Oakland University. I had my classes set up. Um, I had my housing situation set up at Oakland University, but I realized I didn't have any of my books ready. I didn't have anything ready to go over there. Um, and it was a week away. And that's when I was realized that I had an issue and I needed help and there's no way I can go to college. I'm not prepared at all. No clue what I'm doing. So I ended up calling my parents and saying, I need help. I need to go to rehab and I want you guys to support me. And they did. Tell me how they responded when you first made that call. My mom seemed relieved. I didn't communicate as much with my dad. I think he was still very frustrated around everything, but my mom uh, supported me and helped me on the front lines while my dad was maybe doing all of the figuring out which rehab to go to. And um, they helped me get out of where I was living and um, just wanted the best for me at all times. Like they never gave up hope. So how did you come to the Collegiate Recovery Community at Michigan State University? Yeah, so um, after I did rehab, I came home. I stayed clean from rehab ever since then. And I started going to Oakland Community College and did a couple classes, worked part-time, went to school part-time. And after about two years, I decided I should probably go to a four-year university and get a degree. My dad really wanted me to get a degree, <laughs> um, so decided to follow that path. Both my parents went to Michigan State, and I always knew I wanted to go there. So I applied, got in, and moved out to East Lansing. And I didn't know about the collegiate recovery at first. I did some digging while I was living in East Lansing to find some recovery supports out there. And um, the collegiate recovery came up, and I immediately um, submitted an application sent it to Dawn, who's a collegiate recovery leader, um, and she reached out to me within a day about joining and coming to a meeting as soon as possible. Tell us about the collegiate recovery community. What is it? So it's a peer-led uh, support community, and it's pretty much just students who will go to MSU, also to Lansing Community College or in the area. Um, who we are just a group of students who identify as being in recovery, striving for recovery, or recovery allies. And we're just there to support each other. Um, we meet uh, for a meeting weekly on Thursdays, and we also have a club on Tuesdays that I help run, that we try and go out and do events together that are sober and usually away from campus because it can get a little hectic sometimes, but we're basically there to support each other and um, in any way we can. Next time you need to see a doctor, don't go to a doctor. Call Team Wellness Online. 
With Team Wellness Online, you can see a doctor or a therapist without waiting, usually within 24 hours. Your televisit is private and 100% secure, and you can take all the time you want. So next time you need to see a doctor or therapist, call Team Wellness Online at 888-813-TEAM to make a virtual appointment, and we'll come to you. Approximately 10 years ago, Michigan State University's Collegiate Recovery Community was started. It originated with three students at MSU who looked around campus and could not find supports for themselves as being individuals trying to navigate recovery. So our staff in health promotion helped those students create a registered student organization, which at the time was called Travelers Club. And from there, the students, along with our staff, continued to advocate for these important supports on campus. Approximately five years ago, the collegiate recovery community was started, and we also were able to get space on campus. So we now have our 24-7 safe lounge for our students to have that place to go to when they know that they need a place that's gonna be substance-free. And they continue to advocate. So. Approximately four years ago, we were able to get on-campus recovery housing. We are at Michigan State University, the first on-campus recovery housing and the fourth in the Big Ten. One of the important things that we do through the collegiate recovery community is connecting students with additional resources and recognizing that each student has individual needs and when they have a higher level of care, particularly for mental health, connecting them with resources. And so we have our counseling and psychiatric services on campus, we have our center for survivors, and we have other resources and we also connect students off campus Sometimes students have a need, particularly when if they might return to use, that is above and beyond what we have available at Michigan State University, and recognizing the need to connect students to those resources is huge for us. And so that's part of the individualized goal planning that we do with students, is figuring out what their needs are and connecting them with those supports. Kara, there's often a great deal of stigma associated with drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and people tend to shy away from the limelight. Yet you've chosen to come on our show today and to be an advocate. Why is that? So I think advocacy is very important because there is a huge stigma surrounding drug addiction, alcoholism. Um, people are looked at as less than, they don't deserve as much as people who don't use or partake in that. Um, when we have a disease, it's not a moral deficiency, so we should be treated like we have a, a mental health problem, a medical problem that we need treatment for, not that we are just criminals. And um, So yeah, it's important that people go out there and tell their stories so that someone who's struggling knows that there's people out there like them and that there's places to go and things to do. In pop culture, movies, TV, um, music, drinking and college often are perceived to go hand in hand. And every party, every celebration, how does the collegiate recovery community at coexist in such a polarizing environment? Yeah, so there is a lot of drinking that goes on, a lot of partying. Uh, the collegiate recovery community gives students a place to go, a place that's safe. We have a lounge where students have 24-7 access to, and we do, we try to do events. We really get together weekly, like multiple times a week, and try and do something, and it gives people a place to go where they know that there will be no substances and that substances aren't tolerated. Um, we just went kayaking earlier. Um, last year we went up skiing. We do all sorts of things so that people know that you can have fun outside of drinking, even in a college setting. Through the collegiate recovery community at Michigan State University, we provide an array of supports because we recognize each student as individual and at the same time, national research shows us that one of the important factors for student recovery is peer support. 
And so most of what we do through our collegiate recovery community is really creating these spaces and opportunities for peers to support each other in a way that is inclusive and safe. And so how we do that at MSU is that we provide events and activities. So we have sober fun activities. Unfortunately, one of the challenges many of our students face being new to recovery on a college campus is that some of them might not have ever been able to experience fun without the use of substances. And so helping them to learn how to have fun without substances. And so as Kara said, we go kayaking, we went skiing, we just had Friendsgiving the other day. And so having these opportunities for students to connect and also learn how to thrive in a sober environment and, to, and being in recovery is really important. In addition to that, we also have our sober spaces on campus, our recovery housing, as well as our 24 seven student lounge that students can access any day of the year, any time. So we often have students who have roommate issues who might need to get away from that. Sometimes students have roommates who use substances and so they really need to be able to have a place to get away. The other piece at Michigan State University is that we allow students to choose for themselves if they want to remain anonymous. Particularly within our recovery housing program, students are on the substance-free floor and our rooms that are designated as recovery housing on the substance-free floor are not known even to the staff within the residence halls. And so those students are able to disclose that they are in recovery if they would like. If not, that's up to them. And that is so incredibly important for this population of students who often experience stigma and also experience negative reactions sometimes to their choices not to use substances when navigating an environment like a college campus that is so entrenched in a culture around use and partying. Students in recovery who are supported on college campuses are some of the most successful students. So we have seen that here at Michigan State University with our own students. 85% of our students in the collegiate recovery community report having a GPA of a 3.0 or above, and over 50% have a GPA of a 3.5 or above. And our students go on to do amazing things. They are such hard workers who many of them have jobs, many of them support other students, community service is such an important part of their recovery. And so it's so important to emphasize how successful and amazing these students are and how fortunate I feel to be able to work with these students. We are so fortunate at MSU's collegiate recovery community to have Kira in particular and all of our students in recovery. And speaking of Kira, last year we were without a collegiate recovery community student leader. Kira stepped up. She was that person who filled that void. She started giving students rides to meetings, not only our own all recovery meeting, but also other meetings around town. She reached out to students one-on-one. -on -one. She started stepping up within our registered student organization. And so we were trying to kind of get her involved and, and test the waters to see if she might be our next student leader. And she stepped up every opportunity. And so we are so proud to have Kira with our CRC here at Michigan State University. And we're so proud of all of our students. If you can leave the viewers with one message, what would it be? That there's hope. Um, substance use disorder is very, very taxing on the individual as well as the family. I've seen it within my family. They were so incredibly hurt and, but they never lost hope that I would get better. Um, I never thought I would be able to go to college, let alone be on a show, be able to advocate for um, substance use disorder. But here I am doing what I love to do, which is this and if that isn't hope, then I don't know what is. <laughs>
that no one should have to go through alone. At Team Wellness, trained, compassionate, caring professionals will get you into the right treatment. So you get better. Team Wellness. You are not alone. Thank you for being here with us today as we probe the issue of college substance use disorder being addressed with so much success through collegiate recovery communities across the country. If you'd like to learn more about this or any other mental health issue, please visit us on our website at MyHealthyMind.com, on Facebook at My Healthy Mind Show, or on Twitter. We'll see you next week for another edition of My Healthy Mind. Let's talk about it. Be sure to like and subscribe for more episodes of My Healthy Mind. Stress, depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Wellness Center has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. They get a chance to know that somebody's on their team. We think nobody else feels the pain that we feel. We feel like I'm the only one. But that is so untrue. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Working through my problems and, and seeing that I'm not the only one that has to cope has really brought me to a place where now it's okay to talk about it. Because if you keep stuff to yourself, you, know, you, you can't overcome. We all need one another. Team Wellness Center, you are not alone. My job was causing me so much stress. I felt disconnected and frightened. I felt so isolated. I was beginning to feel trapped, depressed. I never expected that to happen to me. We think nobody else feels the pain that we feel, but that is so untrue. It's good to be able to talk about it. I was able to seek help. I found it from Team Wellness. It's a sense of freedom. Team Wellness Center, you are not alone.